This is the Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is the GS Racing Wheel by Moza Racing. It was not that long ago that I reviewed the R16 wheelbase. I was blown away by its quality. I was blown away by its artistic look. It really brought that elegance into the direct drive steering wheel market. And of course, they made the GS Round steering wheel that I reviewed along with it, which was a really, really cool wheel. And they had three others to choose from, Alcantara or the hard leather in a GT or this round wheel. But with all that being so nice and really a, a, an amazing first entry into sim racing for Moza Racing, it did leave a small void or a small hole in their lineup, that being a formula rim. So here we have it, the GS racing wheel, a total butterfly, a total F1 style racing wheel. And when you look at it, when you get a real good look at it up close, this thing is amazing and it looks extremely high end. I, I would have mistaken it for some of the independent wheel companies out there. And to think that it fits into the ecosystem for Moza Racing is really nice. And at $499 for the wheel rim, I think it's a very fair price and it's right in line with the competition. You think of some of the Fanatic wheel rims that would be comparable with some of the same features, you'd be looking at about the same kind of price. And it's actually kind of obvious that Moza has targeted a good portion of their lineup on the high-end ecosystem market like you'd see from Fanatic with the podium level components as well. So like I said, this is a gorgeous wheel. Let's, let's talk about some of the features. Let's go over some of the things that make it such a special looking wheel to me, starting off with the fact that it is wireless. So it is a proprietary wheel. It will only work on Moza bases. So if you're out there with a other direct drive wheelbase thinking that's exactly what I wanted, I'm sorry to tell you, this is not gonna work on that wheel. It's only gonna work on Moza bases, much like the story again with Fnatic or Thrustmaster. It is a 300 millimeter formula style wheel rim, and it is covered in Alcantara grips. It's in all the areas that your hands would actually touch the steering wheel. Other features that make this really nice is, and it's the kind of the, the, the main part of the look, is this five millimeter thick forged carbon plate that the whole wheel it's sort of the spine or the backbone of the wheel rim i love the forging forged carbon look and you see it on a lot of sim racing gear nowadays but it gives it sort of that camouflage carbon fiber look about it they've got some of these teal or green accent throughout including the labels on some of the buttons but a uh, really stiff real rigid real strong feeling wheel based on that five millimeter carbon when we look at the back side, we can get a look at the paddle shifters and the extra clutch paddles. So you got four shifters entirely, the top two being magnetic. They're very stiff, rigid paddles. These are also forged carbon coming in at about three millimeters and about a two inch long lever with a little over a quarter inch travel in that very snappy magnetic shifter style. Since we are on the back side, I can show you that we do have a full plastic back to the, to the wheel. And that is the part of the area that is plastic. You've got a metal quick release. You've got these aluminum, uh, machined aluminum bodies for the dual shifters on each side. And then of course your Alcantara grips. You have of course the giant Moza quick release with its 10 ball bearings. Really fun to click this on. Very positive firm click when you engage this onto either of the wheel bases. Great feature. You've got your five rotary dials on the front. It's hard to mistake them. There they are, they're so beautiful. These knobs are actually a really nicely done aluminum uh, a cover or tip or knob, if you want to call it. And I love that they're a 12 position rotary, so you can actually set it up for positional or you can set it up to work like a button and we'll cover that in some of the settings and adjustments that you can make in the Pit House software. Other features, other dials, we've got these thumb rotaries as well up here in the positions when you're driving. You can actually operate them with your thumbs very easily. And these two are actually press in as well. So you can start to get an idea. We have a lot of functions within this one wheel. Now, one of my favorite things about this steering wheel, hands down, are the illuminated backlit buttons. So all these buttons, there are 10 of them in total. They all have little titles on them and they all have a little ring that lights up. I wish I could turn it on and show you right now. I'll give you some B-roll so you can see what I'm talking about. But you can actually change the color. So not only are they backlit, if it was just a single color backlit buttons, I would be like, that is really cool. I like that. It's nice for seeing buttons in the dark. It makes it look super duper high end. And then on top of that, 
you can change the color to whatever you want, whether you're looking for a pattern that is intuitive to you as a driver. Maybe you're looking for a pattern that is stylized with the way you want the wheel to work. You have a lot of variety there, a lot of freedom and a lot of fun to be quite honest with you and a really, really nice feature of this steering wheel. In addition to that, you've got the two joysticks. These are up, down, left, right, and a press button. So in total, you have so many controls that you're gonna forget what you've mapped some things to. It's the inevitable when you have this many things. And I would totally tell you, if you have this steering wheel, you're not even gonna need a button box. You're gonna have so many buttons to choose from. In addition to that, you have the Moza styled continuous LED bar. So instead of the nine or 10 dots that light up, you have a continuous bar that illuminates with color throughout the rev limit of the car. Another extremely cool feature about the GS racing wheel when comparing it to a variety of the high-end racing wheels that you could put on DD wheels is that it is a wireless wheel rim. You do not have any wraparound cable, but with that, it is a proprietary wheel rim as well. It is only gonna work on Moza racing wheel bases. So if you're out there with any other kind of base, you're basically gonna have to change to this family, this ecosystem in order to utilize this or any of their wheel rims, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Because the GS racing wheel is an ecosystem based or proprietary racing wheel, it can only be used on the Moza bases. Well, that means you've already installed the Moza Racing Pit House software, which is good because that's how you actually make some adjustments to the way some of the functions on this wheel rim operate. So let me get it here on the wheel base. I love doing that. I love that quick release. It's such an awesome quick release. Anyway, okay, so we have the Pit House software, and this is where you can see all the pedals, the bass, everything. And we've covered this, of course, when we did both of the reviews of the wheel bases in the past, but just a quickie focusing on the wheel rim itself. The other nice thing, if you get this brand new, you are going to want to go here and make sure that you have the latest firmware and it's all automatic. You can just hit upgrade all in one click and it takes care of the base, the pedals, the dash, everything, uh, wheel rim included. But when we're here at the wheel rim screen is where we can adjust things like our, our clutches. Do we want them to act as though they are a combined axis? When I think of combined axis, I think like a, a rudder pedal, left one direction, right the other direction, but it's the same range or the same potentiometer, so to speak. Axis split, meaning are they independent of each other, acting independently left and right, or finally, I just wanted to work like buttons. I don't need the extra clutches. I got my paddle shifters. I don't need clutches here. I got them down there. I'm just gonna make them operate like an extra button. You could do that as well. And then you could adjust the clutch bite point, the actual moment where the game recognizes it. And it comes default to 50, but if you're like doing a Formula One type car and you wanna uh, adjust for the, the launch at the start of the race, you can make that adjustment to be perfect for the car that you're doing. Uh, you also have the ability to adjust the dials, the rotary dials, the bands. They call it band mode. Now, when you're doing this, like I said, it goes one, two, three, four, all the way up to 12 and then back down, or it can be recognized like a button and you make that adjustment here. Some games don't respond to dials. They only work with buttons. So of course you'd put it in button mode. And then sometimes you do want it to be a dial. Uh, it might match up perfectly with the game or you've dialed the, uh, program the game to acknowledge the dial. You can make that adjustment right there. For your joysticks, same sort of thing. A joystick can read like a gamepad, up, down, left, right, or it can act like independent buttons, just like we were talking about here and act as different buttons. And again, some games will want and prefer, you might want and prefer to act each way, but you can affect that right here under stick mode. You can also turn on and off the RPM indicator. Now, when it gets to the indicator display mode, you have mode one, which is what I prefer, where, the, where it goes from left to right. So in this example, our bar would start off green on this side, work its way up into the red lights in the middle. It's a bar, not lights or dots like it shows there, and then work its way into the pink. Or mode two, it would just start all lit up in green, and as the revs increased, it would switch to all red, and then of course switch to all pink. Which do you prefer? I definitely prefer the bar style. That's the way I have mine set up. Then you, do you want the RPM indicator, this bar, do you want it to lead you? So if you want it to be like an indicator of when to shift, you might put it to lead you and be early. 
You might want it just plain normal locked in with the engine. You might want it late even if you have a habit of early shifting. Maybe you make it late so it slows you down just a little bit. And then finally a custom where you can decide exactly what percentage of the RPM do you want each light. Now what I often will do is play with the in-car LED bar. So when I'm looking at the Mazda dash, I might look at where each light comes on and then program it to match exactly. But once you're all happy, and then of course you can adjust the brightness as well. And the bottom line is once you're all happy with all these settings, everything's good for any car you like, you can then save the setting and you can save it for just the wheel rim per car or if you change rims, maybe you have a different configuration for the round wheel than you do the formula wheel, you can change it, make those settings and save them. And that way when you switch things or switch cars, you can just load the settings for the wheel rim itself. It doesn't affect the force feedback. That's a different saved setting. In addition to that, we do have our backlit buttons, but they can't be adjusted there. We have to be putting it, we have to put it into debug mode and I'll cover that from a better angle so that you can see what I'm doing. I think one of my favorite features about this wheel is the backlit LED buttons. I think it's one of the things that separates it from a lot of the wheels on the market and actually takes it into that super high-end wheel market. Now, I love that you can change the colors, but it is a little tricky and unfortunately, it can't be saved with the wheel settings. So you can only do it through this debugging mode which it's not too much of a pain, but it'd be a lot easier to do it with my mouse and it'd be really nice to save the settings. So what you have to do is you have to actually hold in the BB and the ERS button. These are both push in dials and you get that flashing light. As much, as long as that light is flashing, you press a button and it changes the color. Nine colors to choose from per button. And you just go until, I mean, if you want to make all of the lights blue, you could just keep clicking through on each button and then we'll get them all to be blue. Now it is tricky. It's a little easier if you're sitting in the steering in the proper spot. I'm just sort of sitting here backwards so I can demonstrate what it's doing. But yeah, you can see, you can change all of them. But the problem again, it doesn't remember. It's only in this debugging mode. So if I go change settings on the wheel in Moza Pit House, I can't make those changes there. It also means you can't, it's not an easy change if you're doing it just per car or anything different, but I do find that I had it set up where I had groupings, certain things in blue because they meant menus, certain things in green because they meant communication, certain things in red because they meant uh, what I do in the pit box and things like that. So it is really nice. It is a cool feature. You could make it for style. You could make it for function. You could do whatever just gives it the look that you want it to be. And it's again, one of those features that I think really takes it to that high end level. When it comes down to how I feel a wheel rim operates, it really does come down to how does it perform out on track. So therefore it's probably easiest to demonstrate that sitting in my sim rig. And it really does start with the quick release. So we're using the Moza R9 wheelbase here. And here's the GS wheelbase quick release, which we've talked so much about. It is very big. It's got that 10 ball bearing connection. And I keep saying it, it's actually, it's similar to the one I use in a race car. One of our lemons cars has almost the identical quick release. And it's so nice. You just put the wheel on and you don't have to think much about aligning it. And you just spin it until it clicks. And you hear those 10 bearings. You heard that connection, how strong it was. And it is a very rigid, quick release, very strong, no flex whatsoever. So now focusing more on the wheel, it does have these Alcantara grips. They are very comfortable. You're looking at about an inch and a half front to back and a little over an inch left to right. So they're a little bit ovalized and flattened on the ends and it does make it comfortable in your hands. Now with a bare hand, I can feel that seam. You see the seam in the footage of the two panels of the side grip coming together. I can feel that slightly when I really squeeze with like the G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip. Now, under normal driving conditions, I don't feel that so much. It's just a pretty comfortable grip on my hands, a good shape, a good amount of room for my fingers and my thumbs. And I honestly, I've done most of my testing in gloves. And the reason being as much as Alcantara does hold up better than suede, it still does wear over time. So therefore, with a decent pair of gloves, you'll protect. The other is, I find it allows me to hold the wheel 
more firmly without actually putting more pressure on the steering wheel. All right, let's take it out on track. So with that quick release, again, we talked about the stiffness and you feel it. When you turn this wheel, it is a very firm wheel. You can feel, because if you put any twisting force, any push or pull force on it, you'll notice that it just completely resisted and it only allows movement in that intended direction. And that's something really good. And that's that five millimeter forged carbon plate that's doing a really good job of holding this thing really stiff. Now, the paddle shifters. You've got the upper two paddle shifters. They measure in almost two inches in length. Their travel is short. It's that quarter inch, a little over a quarter of an inch of travel. It's not a ton, but it's enough to definitely have engaged the magnetic paddle shifter, which you can hear in action. These are three millimeter forged carbon, and they are also very stiff. Even if I'm up on the tips of the shifters, you can feel a really, really firm, positive click and there's no flex whatsoever. Same goes for the clutch paddles, depending on what you're using them for. They're not as long and they're even more rigid because they're not as long. There's not this extended part off the top on them. Another thing that is important for me when it comes to driving and testing a wheel is the button layout. I need a layout that accomplishes a couple of things. I need it to be easy to use. I have smaller hands. How many buttons can I reach without drastically taking my hands off. So with that, I can operate the top three, the two twisting knobs here on the side, including the engaging of the buttons. So that takes us to six, uh, eight, let's see, wait, wait, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, 14. I can get to those mid buttons with my thumbs while driving, no problem. That gets me us up to 14 controls and the joysticks are right in reach, just maybe a little bit more tricky to delicately operate with my hands on the wheel. I might need to remove them for that. But a lot of functions in this layout that allow me to drive, keep my hands on the wheel, operate the paddles, operate the lower paddles, operate as many as 14 button operations without removing my hand from the wheel. With this being a formula style wheel rim, again, it's got so many functions that you literally could use it in any scenario. However, I do think in maybe a rally car, a NASCAR, that it's maybe not the best application. You might be better off with the RS racing wheel, but anything open wheel, and you think of any modern GT car, the wheels in them nowadays are more like this because of the amount of functions that you can build into the wheel so that the driver can keep both hands on the wheel while driving and do as many functions as possible and this definitely does that job very, very well. When it comes to the buttons or dials that I can't necessarily operate with while driving, you've got the five in the middle and the lower buttons, which I could pivot my thumb and reach while driving, but realistically, I kind of have to remove my hand slightly. I can still operate slightly from the driving position, but I definitely have to come off of that normal grip position. For the five dials in the middle, I absolutely have to remove a hand. Now those, they have a really, really good detent. So when you're like just blindly reaching over, I mean, it's five positions, so it's pretty easy to remember which one is which, depending on how you have them mapped. And the detent and the distance between rotations, the degrees, is enough that you're not gonna accidentally get two clicks if you didn't want it. And you're definitely gonna know when you got a click. There'll be no miss understanding in your mind. You're gonna feel that click, you're gonna know that you got the next position and that it did change your brake bias or your turbo as one is labeled or your traction control. Another thing that I really, really do like and it comes down to that peripheral vision and what you see. Sure, we have our in-car rev light that you can see on a lot of games, but not all cars have them and it's not always in a position that you can see. Now at the top, this rev bar, the continuous LED rev bar. I love the continuous function. I think it just looks real modern compared to a bunch of lights lighting up and that it could be just a personal preference. I love the freedom of being able to change the colors. And I talked about this when we did the RS racing wheel as well. I love the freedom of changing those colors to whatever color pattern that I want. And in my case, what I usually do, I mean, I find myself running two or three cars in a season so I'll usually save a setting that'll have the exact same colors with the exact same timing and sequence as the real in-car game. 
So if I'm driving the Ferrari, I want to match the timing of and the color of the lights on my wheel versus the one that's in the dash. But this one, it's really bright and I can see it out of my peripheral vision. So when I'm driving, I can see that color growth. I can see that flashing point knowing exactly when I want to make my shift. And then finally are the colored backlit buttons. And you could say that this was just a style or an artistic or a beautification aspect of the wheel. And I would agree with you because I have really come up with some really cool combinations of colors that just make the wheel rim look very exciting if that's what you're going for. But it also has and serves a function. The ability, and what I've done is I have, I have set certain ones, certain groupings to certain colors to remind me, hey, if it's blue, then it has to do with menus. That's the way I've set it up. Blue buttons have everything to do with the menu structure of iRacing or Seto Course or whatever your game is, navigating the menus. I have everything that is in red. I've lit them up in red. If it has anything to do with making a pit stop, that could be the pit limiter. And that could be a macro that I have set for a certain type of uh, fuel stop. But anything to do with pit lane, I have in red. And anything that has to do with car functions, I have set in green. So without a whole lot of thought, I know right now, if I want to make a change to the car, any of the green buttons are the ones I'm looking for. If I want to change my menu, any of the blue buttons are the ones that I'm probably looking for. And that means that it functionally is giving me those visual cues to help me remember what all these buttons do. It has so many buttons, so many dials, so many functions, anything is going to help you remember what each and every button does. Well, that tells you just about everything you need to know about the GS Racing Wheel, but I always like to make it perfectly clear and break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line. Starting off with the good, and that being, this is an absolutely gorgeous steering wheel. Feels like very high-end parts. Buttons, dials, shifters, aluminum pieces. It is the button box eliminator. I tell you, you're not going to need a button box. This had more buttons or more controls than I could map in any of my favorite cars. Programmable backlight colors of the buttons. Dials, button press, or positional, game dependent. Very comfortable wheel. Super stiff, no twist, no flex. Magnetic paddles feel great. Bonus clutch paddles. Wireless, no wraparound cable to deal with. Programmable dial mode, button or dial. Customizable continuous LED strip color. And now on to the not so good. Starting with the fact that this wheel is proprietary. It only works with Moza wheelbases. Lower portion of the plastic of the wheel rim feels plastic and hollow. Heavy wheel rim, combination of the wheel and the quick release, very heavy combo. Backlit buttons only adjusted in debug mode, not savable. And the final complaint I have about this wheel is it has more controls than my old brain can even remember. So I don't know if that's actually a legitimate, not so good item, but I swear it has more buttons, things. If I mapped everything, I would easily forget. I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time making uh, little uh, diagrams to follow everything that goes with this wheel or make labels for absolutely everything. It has so many controls on it. So let's now talk about the bottom line on this wheel. I mean, I didn't mention its price as a pro or con. It comes in at $499, and I feel that that is right in line with comparable wheels from, say, Fnatic. And I, and I think it's very clear that Moza is copying, going after, uh, using Fnatic as an example of the market. They just kind of cut off the low end and just said, hey, from this level of a, a, a small DD and a big DD and a selection of wheel rims, we're just gonna try to match that market. And I think they've done a good job of building the ecosystem and that this wheel rim really is what they needed to round out that ecosystem along with that smaller wheelbase, which again, we covered in the other review. 
The next thing that does occur to me on a wheel rim like this that has so many options and you get into the predetermined labels. So you have your ABS or turbo. Well, most of the cars that I drive don't have a turbo boost adjustable. That's going to be on a certain type of car, certain type of game. So why do I want something labeled turbo? But on the other hand, if they didn't label it all, you'd have no reference. And the same goes for some of the backlit. In some cases, the backlit labels worked for what I wanted. And in other cases, it didn't. That's when I loved the colored LEDs and my ability to build groupings. So I actually did things where I'm like, oh, well, I want all my adjustments to the in-car to be in blue. I want all my communications to be in green. I want all my pit functions to be in red. And I could build groupings that way as an easy reference, an easy reminder while I was out on track driving the wheel. In the end, I have to say that this is absolutely one of my favorite wheel rims that I've ever actually had permanently here in the studio. It meets every need that I have from a Formula One style steering wheel. With the Moza, with the bigger base, you even have the dash. You can have their display above it. So it doesn't have a display. And I think that's a feature that a lot of people will argue. Do you want a full display with like tire temps and lap times, all that stuff on your wheel rim? or do you want that on a secondary device or do you just want that up on your screen? Some people love that being built into the wheel rim, but obviously it comes at a higher cost. Maybe we'll see something like that from Moza in the future, who knows? Because at this point, they've blown me away. Coming out with a variety of wheel bases at different Newton meters and at anywhere from a very affordable up to a very high end price point, along with a quality wheel rim to go with it, along with a quality formula rim, I should say a quality GT style or oval rim to go along with it. And you also have the formula style rim to choose from now, which really rounds out their lineup. They have the fine pedals as well, which we will be reviewing in the near future. We just kind of got a little sidetracked with some of the new toys that we were able to play with. So I hope I've told you everything that you want to know about the Moza Racing GS Racing Steering Wheel, the Moza Racing GS Racing Wheel. And of course, check out our review on the new Moza R9 wheelbase, the very affordable lower Newton meter, nine Newton meters at a very affordable price, that 449 price point, which is just amazing that you could be looking at kits at that price. And again, very comparable with what we've seen from Fanatic. And then we'll, of course, have to see what Thrustmaster has up their sleeve towards the end of the year. You can check this wheelbase out, wheel rim. You can check this wheel rim or the wheelbases out at mozaracing.com. So I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know that we're doing everything right. And of course, check us out at thesimpit.com where you can join any of our racing series. And if you want to support the show, check us out at patron.com where members do get special perks. We have some giveaways and access to early access to videos and things like that. Come race with us and all that good stuff. Thank you for watching. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.